don't you hate it when you get way down the road on an engineering project only to find out that you had problems back at the very beginning? It's like building a house and putting up the walls and the roof and the plumbing and stuff and picking out the pillows and carpet and uh oh, <laughs> we made a mistake back when we poured the foundation. Yeah, that'll be a bit of a respin there. <laughs> Just take down the roof and of course those walls won't work and oh, yeah, this reminds me of one of my PCB design projects. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today's PCB designs have gotten really complicated, and it's common to have respins caused by errors in the schematic. These types of errors can cause schedule delays, support problems, engineering frustration, and, well, overall, money. <laughs> Luckily, today my guest is Craig Armenti from Mentor, and we're going to talk about Expedition Schematic Integrity Analysis, which will nip a lot of those schematic errors in the bud. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about Expedition Schematic Integrity Analysis from Mentor. Hi, Craig. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Amelia. It's great to be here. So, Craig, it seems like my PCB designs just keep getting more and more complicated, like everyone's, I imagine. And these days, I find myself having to do a lot of respins with my board design because of errors in my original schematic. Agree, agree. And we're finding that more and more as designs get more complex, especially in the consumer space, where we're trying to get more and more onto the board and more and more into the design in a shorter period of time. We've actually found that approximately 78% of all projects are experiencing two or more respins. And a lot of it just has to do with this complexity and the ability to be smart about how you verify the design, especially early on. And if you look at the schematic portion of the design process, and if you think about the process as a line from concept to manufacturing with concept all the way on the left and manufacturing all the way on the right, schematic is very close to the left-hand portion of that line. And so those schematic errors are often passed into layout, fabrication, assembly, lab testing, or even into the release product. So the idea is really to do your best to verify the schematic, verify your product itself as early on in the design process as possible. And that's where expedition schematic integrity analysis comes into play. Now, it sounds like we both agree on the respin problem, and there are some late-stage catches that can be expensive. But what can we do about it? I don't think be more careful with your schematics is a good answer for this. No, no, I agree, I agree, and most folks will agree that as careful as you could want to be and as many times as you would want to manually check something, you really need an automated methodology to check your schematic. And historically, there's always been integrity checks at the PCB level, integrity checks at the manufacturing level, but what's been lacking is those integrity checks at the schematic level. So to have a tool that will automatically detect critical design errors and eliminate those respins that are caused by those schematic errors can be a great benefit to your team and to your product development process. Really, it can eliminate hours and hours of manually reviewing schematic by your team, reducing your risk, and really help ensure you're getting a quality product to market as quick as possible. All right, those are all the right words for what I'd like to happen, but how does Expedition get me there? Well, with Expedition Schematic Integrity Analysis, we have a fully automated, proven schematic integrity tool that's designed to help you replace your visual schematic inspection process. It has exhaustive rapid power and technology aware tests that it can perform on all nets in the schematic. So we're not just in a manual check, you might pick the most complicated portions of the schematic and focus on those and perhaps miss something that could be happening in another portion of the schematic. By using an automated schematic verification tool, it really gives the opportunity to make sure you're checking all of the schematic. It can even go as so far as identifying poor design practice with some of the checks that are built in. Bottom line, you're going to save hundreds of hours of visual inspection and potentially downstream lab debug time for errors that might get through. 
So it seems like sometimes we check our schematics really carefully, and then we have errors creep in after we've done our checks. Yeah, if you think about it, everyone's had to manually check something at one point or another. And when you manually check a schematic, especially with today's products, it's often more than one person that's involved with the checking. Oftentimes, for example, there'll be an RF portion of the schematic that has an RF engineer focused on that, a digital portion of the schematic which has a digital engineer focused on that, so on and so forth through the various portions of the schematic. So it's not just one person manually checking the schematic. It's multiple people checking. And they're going to focus at certain points within the process and dedicate their time to checking. And they're going to spend hours, maybe even an entire day, just checking their section of schematic. Whereas with the Expedition Schematic Integrity Analysis Automatic Checks, that's reduced literally to minutes. And so the fact that you have these automated checks that you can run in minutes now gives you the ability to not have to worry about when's my one check going to be and what's going to happen after that one check occurs, but rather you have the ability to now virtually unlimited amount of times check and correct your schematic throughout the entire design process. The other benefit is it doesn't have to be that RF engineer that checking the RF section or the digital engineer checking the digital section. Virtually anybody familiar with that schematic can run these checks review the results, and have an idea of what needs to be corrected in that schematic before it's passed down to the downstream processes. That makes a lot of sense, and I hadn't really thought about the importance of being able to repeat the checking process many times. So I'm liking the sounds of the save hundreds of hours part you mentioned a minute ago. Let's dive in deeper and talk about how exactly this thing works. So Expedition Schematic Integrity Analysis software has about 125, actually more than 125 built-in automated checks that are performed on every single net on your schematic. And as it's performing those checks, it's using a model library, over 6 million models available to help with that check. And because it's using those models, it knows for a particular IC, what's a power pin, what's a ground pin, what's an input, what's an output, and how's that pin supposed to be used based on the data sheet specification. And so because it's doing those checks, it's really giving you more feedback than just, oh, there's an open here or potential short here. It's really looking at how you've used that device on the schematic and whether you've used it in the manner in which the data sheet has specified that part should be used. And it's doing that for every single pin on every single part on every single net on the schematic. Okay, that sounds great. But let's talk a bit about the kinds of errors that we typically make in our schematics. I'm curious about how many of those the tool can catch. That's a great question. If you're performing a manual schematic review, you're going to check for things like components not properly connected to power and ground or a missing power, missing ground, diodes oriented the wrong way, pin voltage mismatch. And if you're involved with a multi-board system, you know, you're going to focus on if there's incorrect board to board connections. And those are all great issues to look at during a manual check. But if you think about all the things that could go wrong with the design, that's really just scratching the surface of what you should be checking. And so by moving to an automated schematic verification process, as I mentioned earlier, a whole multitude of checks can be performed every time you're looking at that schematic. Yep, I feel like most of us have just about had all of those errors you mentioned, some of them many times. So what are the checks that Expedition does to help us find these kinds of errors? Well, I'll just give you a brief example of some of those 125 checks. One of them that comes up a lot is bus flip errors, especially on a multi-sheet schematic, multi-block schematic. On one portion of the bus on one sheet, you've gone from most significant bit to least significant bit couple of blocks further up line or a couple of sheets away from that, you have that same bus instantiated. And inadvertently, perhaps there's another person capturing that sheet and they go from least significant bit to most significant bit. So it's, do you have your diodes oriented correctly? Do you have your driver and receiver set up correctly? Is a net that's supposed to have a receiver missing the receiver? Are there multiple or missing power supplies on a net? Because we have this powerful 6 million plus model library behind these schematic checks and driving these schematic checks, we know everything there is about the parts that are on your design and how they should be used. And we can check if you've connected them correctly or inadvertently made a mistake. So Craig, talk to me a little bit about your real world experience with this. The features sound great, but I'm curious on how things go with real world design teams. 
we always check back with our real design teams as the success they've had. And we recently did a case study looking at 100 customer designs. And we found that total findings uh, per project were about 84. And uh, of those 84 findings, five of them were what we label as critical defects that if they would have been passed downstream, they would most certainly have resulted in a defective board, defective product, or the need for a, a respin. On average, we're checking boards with over 3,000 nets and close to 4,000 devices per board. And because we're saving respins, everyone involved with printed circuit board design knows how much time is involved with each spin of the board. And because we're saving respins, we estimate of those 100 designs that were used in this case study, we've saved 18 days time to market reduction on those designs where those critical defects existed. Now, that seems like a substantial improvement in design flow you've talked about. Really, it's changing the paradigm of the design flow. Here at Mentor, we like to talk about left shift technology. And I mentioned earlier, if you think about the process as a timeline from left to right with concept all the way on the left and manufacturing all the way on the right, our goal is to left shift as much of the checking from the right side of that timeline over to the left side and perform those checks as early in the process as possible. And this expedition schematic integrity analysis is a perfect example of left shifting items that we may not catch until we're in the PCB design phase or even in the manufacturing phase and being able to catch them all the way up in the schematic design phase during schematic verification so they never get to the PCB design and never result in an ECO to the PCB. They never get to manufacturing. They never result in some impact to that prototype board or that pre-production board and the ability to use that data and eliminate spins because we've checked that data so far upstream versus letting it pass further downstream. Yeah, that's impressive. So, Greg, let's talk a little bit about what that left shifting and shorter cycles and fewer respins actually buys us business-wise. Well, business-wise, we're looking at things like reduced development time, reduced testing time, and even reduced warranty costs because some of these schematic errors are not going to be so obvious during your prototype builds or your pre-production builds. And unfortunately, they're going to make it all the way out into what you release as a production version of the design, end up in field failures, and really then that's where you get involved with the warranty costs. So really just being able to reduce the hardware development cycle time, again, as I mentioned earlier, by an average of 18 days, certainly those fewer hardware spins is going to give you faster time to market. In today's environment, especially in the consumer space, we're hearing more and more of the importance of being first to market. If you're not first to market, in some cases, you may as well not even go to market at all. So being able to have a good schematic leading into a good PCB design, that resulting in manufacturing boards that are of high quality early on in the product development process is really where expedition schematic integrity analysis most benefits design teams. We like to call it the fast path the productivity. Excellent. That makes a lot of sense. I'm going to click on that link right now and learn more about Expedition Schematic Integrity. Thank you so much for joining me, Craig. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Same here, Amelia. Thanks for having me. It was great talking to you about this great functionality that we hope engineers will be taking advantage of soon. Now, before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about Expedition Schematic Integrity Analysis from Mentor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or head on over to YouTube, keyword EE Journal.